Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing P groups. Okay, so we've started off with theorem 1, which is that the center of a P group is never equal to the trivial subgroup, i.e., there is always a non identity element in a P group which will commute with all other uh, elements of that group. Okay, right, so what I want to do now is go on to theorem 2. And theorem 2 concerns normal subgroups within a P group. Okay, so we'll underline theorem 2, I think, in green here. Okay, so what we're going to assume then is that we have some normal subgroup inside of a P group. Okay, now I want to put a little warning here. Uh, theorem 2 might seem a little bit uh, pointless to you. Okay. Theorem 1, you can just about see why that's an interesting result. Theorem 2, you might just look at it and think, well, why would I care? Bear with Theorem 2. Theorem 2 will help us in some of the later theorems, which will be more interesting. Okay, so just go along with Theorem 2. It's a very easy theorem, uh, but when I state it, you will think, well, why on earth would I care? Okay, but you will care. It's important for some of the uh, later theorems. Okay, right, so we're going to have a normal subgroup, which as usual I will call capital N here, which is a normal subgroup inside of our P group, and I'm going to assume that it's non-trivial. Okay, so I don't want you just to pick the trivial subgroup. Okay, so it's a non-trivial normal subgroup inside of your P group. Okay, so we've got some non-trivial normal subgroup inside of the P group, then the claim is that the intersection of N with the centre of P Okay, so if you intersect these two together, okay, so you ask which elements uh, in the normal subgroup are also in the centre of the P group, i.e. which elements in the normal subgroup commute with all other elements of the P group, okay, well the answer is that this is not equal to the trivial subgroup. Now, of course, this will always have to be a subgroup of your P group, because you're intersecting two subgroups here together, okay, so you will always end up with a subgroup, but the claim is that this is not equal to the trivial subgroup. Okay, so it's, if you like, a similar theorem to theorem 1 there. Okay, it's all about the centre of the P group. Okay, right, so a normal subgroup will contain at least one non-identity element uh, that commutes with all other elements of the group, is what theorem 2 is saying here. And in fact, what you can conclude from this, so indeed a corollary of this, so indeed if your normal subgroup has order just equal to the prime, so if the order of this normal subgroup is just equal to the prime, so we're assuming at the moment that our P group has order P to the power of A, okay, so if the normal subgroup is size just equal to that prime, then what does this mean? Well, uh, the normal subgroup intersect the centre of P. According to this theorem, if theorem 2 is correct, then this is not equal to the trivial subgroup, but this is a subgroup of the P group, and therefore by Lagrange's theorem it must have order that divides the order of the entire group, i.e. a power of P. Now there are only P elements in the normal subgroup, so then these two things tell us that N intersect the centre of the P group must have order equal to P as well, i.e. that this must equal the normal subgroup. Okay, so if, you're, if you've got a normal subgroup inside your P group, uh, that has order the prime that pertains to that P group, then you can instantly conclude that all of the elements in that normal subgroup commute with all other elements of the group, capital P, and you can hopefully appreciate how uh, that sort of knowledge will actually be useful to know. Okay, right, so if you've got a normal subgroup inside of a P group that has order just equal to the prime, then you can instantly conclude that uh, all of the elements in there commute with all other elements of the group. Okay, and it's obvious that that's going to be true if theorem 2 is true. So we just need to prove theorem 2, and then of course this will be true. Okay, so how are we going to prove then that if you've got a non-trivial normal subgroup of a P group, that the intersection with the center of the P group is not equal to the trivial subgroup? Well, this is actually very simple. Again, it comes down to the partition of the group into its conjugacy classes, okay? Uh, so, and a variation of the class equation. So here again, uh, we will draw out this picture of our uh, P group split into its conjugacy classes. So here, outlined in orange, this is the entire P group here. And of course, what it can be partitioned down into is its conjugacy classes. So let's say here is those 
conjugacy classes with just a single element in, which are the elements of the centre of the group, they're all in conjugacy classes by themselves. So this portion of the partition, this is made up by the elements of the centre of the uh, P group. And then over here, we've got the non-trivial conjugacy classes. Okay, so what I want to now add on to this picture is um, the normal subgroup. Okay, so at the moment this is just our P group split into its conjugacy classes. Now let me add on the normal subgroup. Okay, and I'm doing this in a very particular way, which is true. The way I'm doing it is true. Okay, so let's say this, this here, is going to be my normal subgroup, capital N here. Okay, now what you will see in the way that I've drawn this, you will see that N is made up, basically, it's built out of conjugacy classes of P. You will note that N does not contain half of a conjugacy class, okay? It contains, it either contains all of a certain conjugacy class, or it contains absolutely none of that conjugacy class. So this is our normal subgroup, our non-trivial normal subgroup of P, okay? Uh, so that's a really important piece of understanding here, that any normal subgroup, in fact this generalizes, any normal subgroup of a general group, capital G, it's always going to be built out of the conjugacy classes. It will either contain uh, all of a conjugacy class, or it will contain none of it. Okay, so the two possibilities for a certain conjugacy class that I'll just call C. So if you've got an arbitrary conjugacy class, any one of these, okay, and we're counting the trivial ones and the non-trivial ones here, okay, either it will be completely contained within your normal subgroup, or it will completely not be contained in your normal subgroup, i.e. the intersection of it with the normal subgroup will be equal to the empty set. Okay, those are the only two possibilities. A conjugacy class cannot half be inside a normal subgroup. You cannot have, for instance, the normal subgroup taking up half of this conjugacy class, but not the other half. And the reason, of course, is that a normal subgroup is closed under conjugation by any element of the group. Okay, so if I pick any element of the group, to conjugate any element of the normal subgroup by, I will get something that's back in uh, the normal subgroup. Okay, so you cannot just contain half of a conjugacy class, because if you did, imagine you contained, let's say, one of the elements from this conjugacy class here, let's say little g here, but not any of the other elements. Well, that can't be the case, because remember the conjugacy class of little g, so CG here, will just be all of the elements that you can get from little g by conjugating it by other elements of the group, okay? But if little g is in the normal subgroup, then it's supposed to be the case that whenever I conjugate little g by any element of the group, I get something that's back in capital N, the normal subgroup, but I get the things that are in the conjugacy class of little g, okay? So it would be a contradiction, basically, okay? It, you, once you contain one element of a conjugacy class, you have to contain all of the elements of a conjugacy class. And that's why, truly, this picture is representative. When you have a normal subgroup, it will be built out of, like building blocks, conjugacy classes of your uh, group here, okay? So indeed, the normal subgroup will contain uh, up, will be built in this way out of conjugacy classes from the larger group capital P. Okay, and that doesn't just uh, that doesn't just hold true in the case of P groups. That is true for arbitrary groups capital G. Okay, so the picture is correct. Uh, it correctly represents what I'm trying to get across here. So what does that now mean? Well, now what we can do is a modified version of the uh, class equation. We can say that the order of this normal subgroup capital N. Uh, is going to be equal to the order of, well, it's going to be equal to the order of the portion of the centre of the group that is inside of N, okay, so N intersects the centre of the group, okay, so this will not be equal to what, uh, sorry, this will not be equal to zero because the identity element, at the very least, from the centre of the group must uh, be in here in one of these conjugacy classes on its own, but this represents the number of elements that are in these trivial conjugacy classes that are inside of N, okay, plus the order of the non-trivial conjugacy classes, okay, so I'll have CGI here, where I can vary, let's say, from 1 to S this time, 
Okay, so this is just, in this case, we've only got one in this picture, this non-trivial conjugacy class here. In more generality, you'd have um, potentially more of the non-trivial conjugacy classes inside of your normal subgroup. Okay, so I hope you can understand that this is true, that the size of your normal subgroup will be the size of uh, the portion of the centre of the group that is inside of the normal subgroup, i.e. n intersect the centre of the uh, group, uh, plus the sizes of all of the conjugacy classes, the non-trivial conjugacy classes that are inside of your normal subgroup. Now, these the exact same thing applies for these as applied uh, in theorem 1, in the proof of theorem 1. These are all multiples of p. Okay, they must be a power of p because they're the exact same conjugacy classes as we had there. They're the non-trivial conjugacy classes, therefore their size cannot equal 1. Their size has to divide the order of the p group, uh, therefore it must be a power of p. So this is all multiples of p. We've discussed that this cannot be equal to zero here, okay, because at the very least it must contain the identity. My claim is that it cannot be size one either, and therefore that it cannot be equal to the trivial subgroup. Okay, and that's how we're going to prove that it cannot be equal to the trivial subgroup. Now we need to ask is what's the size of the normal subgroup? Well, this is a subgroup of the P group, capital P. By Lagrange's theorem, then, it must just have size a power of P. Let's say P to the power of uh, B. Okay, where B is less than or equal to A. So B is less than or equal to A, where A was the power of P that we had for the entire P group. So the order of capital P here was P to the power of A. Okay, but the point is that B is not equal to 1 here, so it, again, is a multiple of P, because we assumed N was not equal to the trivial subgroup, and that's how I know it's not equal to... Um, P to the B is not equal to 1, so B is not allowed to equal 0. I'm sorry, did I say B was not allowed to equal 1? B could be equal to 1. Uh, B cannot be equal to 0, and therefore P to the power of B cannot equal 1. Okay, so this thing is a multiple of P. Okay, so I've got a multiple of P plus something is a multiple of P. That proves that this cannot equal 1 for the exact same reason as before. If you take a multiple of P and add 1 to it, you do not get a multiple of P back again. This must be a multiple of P. Okay, so it's not equal to 1, and therefore you can conclude that the intersection of the nor of a normal subgroup, this non-trivial normal subgroup, with uh, the centre of the group is going to not be equal to the trivial subgroup. Of course, if the normal subgroup was the trivial subgroup, then the intersection would be the trivial subgroup. Okay, uh, so this only applies for those non-trivial normal subgroups. Okay, so there is theorem 2 completed. Again, we'll take a break here, and in the next video we'll proceed with another theorem.